Welcome everyone, my name is Polymac. Today I'm bringing you the pickums for week 5 of the GBA D-League Season 4, and as always, I am joined by Sock. What is up all you GBA D-League type people? We are back for week 5 of the pickums. Alright, and before we hop into that though, let's take a quick look at week 4, which we really don't want to take too long of a look at. No, no we don't. Um, this was not a very great week. As you can see, everyone got the Baltimore Orioles lose versus XBG Black Tires game wrong. Um, I got my lock right along with <laughs> four other people. So there was one game where we all picked one team and it won. There was one game where we all picked everyone and it lost. Yeah, and I will say we did make a mistake. Uh, we we both forgot the rule where you're only allowed to have three t uh, three analysts uh, lock a matchup uh, per week. So once the third one is done, that one's done. No one can lock. So that was our mistake. We allowed five people to lock that game. We shouldn't have. Um, but oh well, we will do that from now on moving forward. It actually affected my lock of the week this week because I was a little slow uh, going on. But yeah, uh, Tom, don't kill us, please. Yeah, I my job. Apologies, Tom. Um, also. Polymac. <laughs> what has two arms, a dark and steel type, and is from Gen 5? That, that would be Visharp, Sock, and, uh... Um, I... Polly, where is that Pokemon drafted to? <laughs> I believe Goldo has it. In the... <laughs> and what does that Pokemon spam a lot of? That's not Pursuit and Iron Head. It, it spams knockoff. <laughs> so why did you say last week that... Okay, um, we're, we're done with it. We're over it. <laughs> So I had to make sure the comment section knew I ripped into him for this. Yeah, I, I when we when I was looking at the matchup, the way the way we record this, I have my notes set up, and I don't have the actual teams lined up in front of me. So I basically have what I've written down, and I wrote down there wasn't a lot of good knockoff. And at the top of my head, the only thing I think of that learned knockoff was the Mega Venusaur. Completely forgetting Bishop was a Pokemon, so that's my bad, and I totally deserve so... you for that. <laughs> Polly just called Bisharp an Unmon. We're keeping it right here, folks. Pickums Week 5 2018 GBA D League Season 4. Keep it in the comments for security reasons. <laughs> oh, but uh, to make it so Tom doesn't kill us even more, we'll suck up to Tom a little bit. Big credit to Tom picking Danza when everybody else picked Zazo this week. So, mm -hmm. big credit there. Yeah, Tom's still riding that train really, really well along with the fan discord. Going 5-1 and one this week, really impressing us. I think he's gone 5-1 and one every week except one. Yeah, he's, he's yeah, been Yeah, week killing. three he went, he had two L's, but Tom on his pick'em game. Oh yeah, he's been absolutely killing it with these pick'ems, whereas most of us have not, and most of us do not have a winning record actually. Most of us are around 500 or below 500 in some people's cases suck. At me. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> let's move on to week five, shall we? Absolutely. And for the fan discord, this week you guys are deciding to pick the Los Angeles Nido King, coached by Danza. You guys are also picking the Los Angeles Cliff Fables, coached by Gregulator. You guys are picking the Phoenix Midnights, coached by Turbo. You guys are also also picking the Durham Dredagons, coached by Six Foot Hacks. You guys are locking the Detroit Butterfreeze coached by Iron Flash Gaming, a.k.a. It's Zazo. And lastly, you guys are picking Deebs and his Calgary Flame Wheels. Yes, and now, moving back to the start of this, we will look at the first game, and that is uh, the Baltimore Orioles, coached by Choice CJ, and the LA Nido Kings, coached by Danza. And a bit of an interesting matchup, uh, very split here. Uh, I made this my lock of the week, and as I mentioned, the uh, whole rule about three, I would have locked the Detroit Butterfreeze versus Toronto. However, there was already three locks, so I did lock this one, but again, I feel pretty confident in this lock based on the matchup. So let's look at that matchup. Megalodios, there's not a lot of good switch-ins on uh, Danza's team. Really, the best switch -in he would have is a Silvali Steel. Uh, so look out for that to come this week. Uh, Trakion can be a big threat. The only resist to its dual stab is the Mega Gallade, and Z-Move will help it deal with the Tangrowth and Pax. So basically, you know, especially, I think Z-Rock is probably the way he goes. He goes Swords Dance with three attacks, uh, but maybe Aerial Ace for the Mega Gallade, and then Close Combat and Z-Stone Edge, or something of the sort. That would be huge for taking down one of those physical walls that could check a Trakion, and then he has very little to take on the Trakion at that point. And then lastly, if there is no Toxpex, which he hasn't been doing a ton of work with Toxpex, Scarf Darmanitan absolutely destroys Danza. He needs Pex there purely for the Scarf Darm, because Scarf Darm otherwise just rips his team a new one. For Danza, Mega Gallade is an absolute menace. All three of CJ's fighting resists are weak to ice. And one of those is also a Celebi, which is weak to uh, x Scissor four times. And then on top of that, Gligar is weak to ice four times. So... 
you know, that's a good thing to, for Danza to take advantage of and see if he does that. Other weeks when I've talked about his Mega Gallade that could do work, he did not even bring Mega Gallade. So let's see if he brings it this time and see if it does work. Um, he has a few other Mons that can do work, but it really varies on what CJ brings. Mons like the Jolteon, the Alolan Marowak, the Weavile. They can do work, but it depends on the six that CJ brings, and he can't bring his entire team. So if he can, if he brings like all three of those, there's at least one of those that there's going to be very little that CJ has to deal with it, and he's not going to bring all three. But if he can go and predict the one that he doesn't have much to deal with, it can put in a lot of work. And I, I, I went with CJ, and I did make my lock, because I do think there's a good combination there between Mega Latios and Terrakion that does cause Dan's a lot of issues, but we'll see. So to sum it up, CJ is going to have to play some three-dimensional chess. Basically. It's going to be complicated. It's a complicated matchup with a lot of things that do a lot of work on both teams and a lot of things that don't do a lot of work. Basically depends on what mons come and what mons don't. Well, that's a lot of the general matchup. But again, I like you said, I love CJ's matchup here. Mega Latios just kind of rips a new one when it comes on in. Going on into our next game, though, we have Goldoa Dragon, coach of the new Akimpoleon versus Gregulator coach of the LA Clefable. Now, Goldoa. Goldoa's front office, aka his roommate Dan and a couple others, have been putting together some really solid teams, and I've been really impressed with his plays recently. But going into the matchup, Greg matches up fairly well against him, but Ditto is a really key mod in this game. It helps scout Greninja's moveset, Bulky versus Offensive Scissor, or even Gliscor's moveset if it lacks Toxic, if it lacks Stone Edge, if it lacks some sort of coverage move. Uh, Sand also does some decent work this game, but I almost fully expect Greg to bring a Swift Swim Seismitoad to counter it, and it all also does a pretty good chunk to his team. Now, if you're on Greg's side of the ball, I don't know how often I'll get to say this, so quote it down. But Quilladin can really help this week. <laughs> it can, it can hey, really help check Excadrill. Hey, don't don't question Quilladin. I'll, I'll give a shout. Out, I'll give a shout out to my boy Potato Jim and his boy Chunk. That thing is a beast. Yeah, shout us to the boy Clasped. Uh, Keytrain also puts Goldoa's defense in a frenzy, as my Lottie can only do so much in a game. Now, Greg. Be weary of Gardevoir because it does help get rid of your defensive checks and it does learn Icy Wind to deal with Gliscor. Overall, Goldo has been steamrolling this past two weeks and his teams have just been getting better and better and Greg is not doing the same thing. I think Goldo just steamrolls this and I think Goldo proves this week why he's one of the top four battlers in the league. Oh, I could definitely see it. He's been playing some great Mons the last couple weeks and hey, maybe he'll uh, maybe he'll actually go with what I predict this time is the last few weeks. And when I've picked for him, he's lost. And when I've picked against him, he's won. So maybe this will be the week I get this game right. <laughs> you act like we actually have any logic to this. I mean, we try. That's why this, these videos are 15 minutes long. <laughs> Hashtag Pick'em's Logic. Ah, uh, yes. Moving on, we go to Turbo and the Phoenix Midnights as he's taking on Melantosh and the Exeter Chief Electivires. And this is another one that is split right down the middle. Both of the two I've talked about have been four. Actually, all first three games have all had four picks one way, four picks the other way. No locks in this one like some of the other ones. And this is an interesting one right here. Uh, looking at Turbo, first thing I see is just Kieran Black. Kieran Black. Kieran Black. Um, that thing just puts in so much work against Melon's team. Melon does not have a lot of great checks, especially since, you know, probably the best switching you would have typically to a Kieran Black would be that Snorlax. But if he brings a C Focus Blast, bye bye Snorlax. Um, so we'll see what set he decides to bring on Kieran Black, but that thing can do a massive amount of work. Azumarill is a great bulky wall breaker here. There isn't a ton that Melon has, it just straight up, you know, can knock it out. Uh, so, and not a lot that wants to take hits from it either. Some things do, some things don't. Um, but most don't. So Azumarill as a wall breaker, huge here, either AV or even Banded. Banded could be a big mon. Um, Embor is also a massive threat. You know, mixed Embor with HP Ice with Zygarde 50 could be huge here. Now looking at Melon, the best thing I really see, the best things I really see, Zygarde 50, pretty good here. Obviously there's that type of Bulu, but Zygarde 50 does get Sludge Wave, so you can go and have that for the Bulu. Bulu obviously will take one because Zygarde 50 special attack is not the greatest, especially if it's a bulkier Bulu, but... Um, other than that, Zygarde 50 is pretty big here, it, just typically offensive in general. And on top of that, Snorlax can be a big threat here if it gets set up. Uh, and there's a lot of things on Turbo Team that Snorlax can set up on. So we'll see how he plays it and what Snorlax set he brings. We've mentioned in the past setup sets we thought could do work for Melon, and he hasn't brought those sets. So we'll see what he does bring this week. I do pick Turbo to win this one, but purely because I know that he's going to do the opposite of what I tell him to do, and I want him to lose. 
we take those. Um, I have Melon in this game just because Zygar 50 does put in so much pressure that it opens the door for other Mons to come on in and come through. Now, moving into our next game of the week, we have the Texas Pokemon Rangers coached by Randy HLD versus the Durham, Drudagon, Durham Drudagons featuring Six Foot Trash. Each week, we look at Randy's team and we look at the opponent's Mamo, Megalop, and Celesteela counters. I don't see an answer to all three, as Scarf Mamo easily revenges Bulky Magirna, which is one of his two answers to Celesteela plus Megalop, the other being Cresselia. Now, Zygar Doggo does do some decent work if Jellicent goes down, but I don't see Randy letting this happen. Scarf of Bombi can be really useful because it can fire a Moonblast to help check Scarf Doggo, Scarf Zoroark, and hit Metacham really hard. It also fires off some nice bug buzzes as it fends off, uh, fend off Crest and really pressures all its recovery moves possibly even getting it to where it has no recovery moves left or having to get it go down. Now, if you're on Leo's side, Infernape does some good work this week, but it does not appreciate Latios just being around in existence. If Latios goes down, then a well-built Infernape set can go into town, but be careful of the Rotom Easy Bake Oven. Nidoqueen is a really nice check to a couple of Randy's offensive mods, but it's pressured down and without any reliable recovery, it doesn't do that much this week. Randy's offensive bulk just outclasses Leo this week, honestly, and Randy's matchup is super solid, and Randy's a good enough player to walk this one home. That's why I have him taking this one. Yeah, this is going to be one of the better matchups this week. Two of the higher, you know, there were the two finalists, I believe, last year, the two finalists of the D-League taking on each other in a rematch of the finals, and... This should be a huge game. There's a lot of things that do work on both sides. I really like, as you mentioned, Infernape's matchup. I do like that. The combination of Infernape, Magirna, and Mega Medi could be huge for Leo, but at the same time, Latios, Mega Lop, and then Rotom Heat being one of the best counters to Magirna in the game, this would be a really fun matchup. Exactly. This could be our game of the week. Oh, absolutely. I would expect it to be, considering how good these two players are. And, you know, this is another really even matchup in the, in the pickums. But moving on to one that's the least even in terms of picks this week. Uh, and we actually don't have a single game that everyone picked one team. So people are getting a little unsettled with the way things have been going so far this season. We have OP Jealous and the Toronto Lee Storms taking on Zazo Iron Flash Gaming and the Detroit Butterfreeze. And a lot of picks going Zazo's way and for good reason looking at the matchup. Uh, we'll start out with OP Jellison as he's the first person there, and Latias is going to be so important for him in this matchup, especially with taking on things like the Zapdos, and just in general, it can be a big nuisance to Zazo's team if he plays it right and brings a proper set, and on top of that, his big win con is going to be Manaphy. Manaphy has to be the one that does work for him this week to really have a shot in this game. It can do a lot of work here if, again, he plays it right and he brings the right set. There are a few different Manaphy sets that could do work here, but he has to bring the right one for this matchup that Zazo ends up trying to plan for. Trying to bring one that Zazo doesn't plan as much for. And that's gonna, It's always difficult, but it's really hard to predict Manaphy in that way sometimes. Now looking at Zazo, bulky Zapdos is just the most annoying thing for OP Jellison to deal with. He does not have a super effective stab to hit Zapdos. He doesn't hit Zapdos super hard on his team in general. He's going to have to get that toxic as soon as possible. If not, Zapdos is just going to sit there all game long. On top of that, he has no good defensive check to Garchomp. Garchomp just destroys his team. It does so much work here. It's dual stab alone just destroys him. If he wants to bring a coverage move, he can, but he doesn't really need it too badly. I mean, he can always throw in I mean, a fourth move he wants. You know, coverage move just hits something a little bit harder. Uh, on top of that, Crook and Heracross, both solid offensive mods this matchup, and the core of Blissey, Zul uh, Blissey Slowbro, and Zapdos. Or if they, he brings that core, that's just a nightmare for OP Jelson to try to break. It would be just horrendous, just so difficult for him to try to break. I don't see him doing it, and I think Zaza walks home with this one. And it's why I wanted to make my lock. It's why three people made it. It's the lock. It's nothing against OP Jellison, but just this matchup is so much in Zazzo's favor, I feel. Yeah, and Zazzo's matchup, along with how Zazzo's been playing recently, has just impressed me. Like, there's no reason that Zazzo should lose this game unless two situations, three situations technically, occur. One, Zazzo decides he wants to meme, have some fun, and then OP Jellison kind of makes the right plays and puts him up himself in a position to win when Zazzo's memes become too much. Situation B is that he gets jawned. Situation C is hacks. Now knowing the analysts, knowing how this show works, 
it's definitely going to end up being C. Oh, absolutely. You know that's how it'll work. One thing I quote was like, if Ferrothorn is there and Ferrothorn gets burned, Manaphy has a really good chance. <laughs> well, well, we'll leave that for another time for Theory Mons. Next up, we have the last match of the week, which is the Battle of Calgary. The Calgary Infirms versus the Calgary Flame Wheels. How often do you hear that? Aaron 2 for 20 versus Deeves. Now, this is our first two, first of two inner city battles this season, the other being Danza versus Greg for Los Angeles. Now, Aaron, I know I say this a lot, but Volcanion has a really nice matchup. Hitting, count them, Lando, Megazard, Nehalego, Superior, Tapu, Fapu Finny, Metagross, Sneasel, and Golisopod with just fire, water, and poison moves. Hariyama is a fantastic check to Sneasel and Galissapod, and Thunderous is really nice because it can pressure Lando T out with Hidden Power Ice Tech, and then can bolt switch around giving Volcanion as many chances as it can to slap Deep's silly. Clefable also does a half decent job at checking Megazard X. Now, if you're on Deep's, Eren's Ground plus Flying Resist is Bronzong and Bronzong alone. Also, Gravity is a move? Check it out sometime again! Metagross is a fairly solid in this matchup as well as an agility set finds some viability given Aaron's speed tiers. Lastly, Porygon 2 is your best answer to Volcanion, and if it goes down, you do too. Aaron's matchup, plus the way he tailors into this game, I think Aaron takes this one and walks home with it. I absolutely could see that. This is a really tough one to predict for sure in this matchup. I do like Metagross a lot in the matchup uh, for uh, Deebs as well. Um, I think that actually Rotom Spook could be a big threat if you can deal with the Hydreigon It could actually be a big threat in this matchup I feel um, just with will was to take on like a Mega Kang and then just his dual stab hits most of his team pretty hard So that's actually something I think could be big work like an offensive like a bulky offensive Rotom Spook here could be really big too But yeah, this is a tough one to predict. I went with Deebs, but I honestly it was a coin flip for me Yeah, this is gonna be one of the better matches to watch as well. There's so many good matchups this week, dude Oh, for sure, and there's a reason that no one, there wasn't a single match where everyone picked, you know, the same battle area, you know. Obviously, Narth was the one who stood out with the one with Toronto against D Detroit, you know, Opie Delson versus Zazzo, but every other one was at least, like, 3-5 or 4-4, four, four, with four of them being 4-4, four, four, split right down the middle between the analysts. Like, this is going to be a, this is a really tough week to predict, and this should be a big week for battles. It's going to be a great one, so grab your popcorn, pop it, sit at home, crack, crack open a nice ice-cold water, and treat yourself to this week. Oh, absolutely. And with that being said, I think we're going to get out of here. Leave a comment down below with what you guys uh, what you guys predicted this week. Keep us updated with your predictions so far. If you didn't agree with the fan discord or with us, let us know down in the comments below. And make sure to leave a like. And Sock, you want to promote the fan discord quick? Hey, absolutely, it's my fan discord. So speaking of the fan discord, be sure to join in the link down below. Join up, tell us your favorite teams, and join in the conversations. We have some very fun times over the fan discord. You can check out the daily discussion with all the coaches talking, pretty active in it. You can talk in the general chat to shoot the breeze with us, or you can talk in other leagues and find yourself a new one. Oh, absolutely, it's a fun time in there with a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot of different places to check out. And, and a lot of memes. A lot of memes for sure. But with that being said, we're going to get on out of here. So thanks for stopping by. Bye-bye. Peace out.